that includes the background with a research question, methods, results, and conclusions. Often it's the only part that's read, but don't act on abstracts alone. The introduction gives context to the research, why this research or study is important, and what other investigation has been conducted to explore this issue, as well as a statement of the hypotheses that the researchers are investigating. The contents included in this introduction are context, what is known, supporting literature with appropriate citations, the gaps in the literature, what is unknown, uh, the newness and relevance to the field, and the questions and hypothesis. This section explains in greater detail how the authors carried out the examination of their study hypothesis, the methods and materials section. This is generally where you'll find a description of the epidemiologic study design used in the study. If the study included analyses of well-known or published articles, existing studies such as the frame Sample selection criteria, for example, inclusion or exclusion, and how data was computed or controlled, if any. The results section is just that. It contains the results of the methodology section based on some. Results is not a place for the interpretation of that data. It, in, it may include 10 graphs that should be understandable without the text. And remember that text should not merely repeat the contents of the tables or graphs. In the discussion section, the authors analyze the results and explain the significance of their findings. They also may explain how the found it in the study. It may include the interpretation of all of their results and answers to the research question posed in the introduction. You may want to know what is the response to the hypothesis, the results of hypothesis testing, and often it includes the relation to previous research, strengths, limitations, assessments, a bias, and recommendations on future research practice and policy. You'll also see tables, figures, and references sections. In the table section, there may be a summary of the study population and a summary of the principal findings of the study. And figures are also an easy way for an investigator to visually show what has been derived from the data. For example, with histograms, pie charts, or scatter charts. And then, most importantly, the references section, where their work is cited from other resources that the author found useful in their research process. And don't forget, there is a long road of peer review between you writing a paper and it being published. This flow diagram shows the process of peer review systems.
the order of the authors is also important. Usually, the first author is the one who led the specific analysis. The last or the last few authors are often the senior or principal investigators, often who brought the scientific funding to support the study or design to the original study. The abstract gives an abbreviated and what other investigation has been conducted to explore this issue, as well as a statement of the hypotheses that the researchers are investigating. The contents included in this introduction are context, what is known, supporting literature with appropriate citations, the gaps in the literature, what is unknown, uh, the newness and relevance to the field, and then questions and hypothesis. Specific paper and to compare complete assignment 1.2. So what to look for as a peer reviewer? One, what was the primary question that the authors were trying to answer? And why were they asking this? What's the rationale behind it? And what was the author's study goal or study hypothesis? You'll also look at methods as a peer reviewer. Consider what type of study design was used and what are the weaknesses of this particular study design? How were the subjects identified and enrolled in the study? And how successful was that enrollment? And then remember, how carefully was the exposure of interest defined and assessed? What was the quality of the exposure data? And ask, was the exposure data validated? And then ask, how carefully was the outcome of interest defined or assessed? So here's a few more questions as a peer reviewer that 